Earth is the third planet from the Sun and the only one we know that has life. It's the only planet which is covered with water, making it the only planet in our solar system with liquid water on its surface. The water is mostly in the big oceans, covering about 70% of the Earth's outer layer. The remaining 30% is land, like the continents we see on maps. Most of the land is somewhat wet and has plants growing on it. There's also ice at the polar regions that hold more water than lakes, rivers, and the air combined. The Earth's outer layer is made up of pieces called tectonic plates that move slowly. They interact with each other, creating things like mountains, volcanoes, and earthquakes. Inside the Earth, there's a liquid layer that produces a magnetic field, protecting us from harmful solar winds and cosmic radiation. The Earth has an atmosphere that keeps the surface conditions just right for life. It's mostly nitrogen and oxygen, with some water vapor that forms clouds. These clouds and other gases in the air trap energy from the sun, keeping the Earth warm enough for liquid water. This process keeps the average temperature around 14.76 degrees Celsius. The Earth is round, like a ball, but a bit squashed, with a circumference of about 40,000 kilometers. It's the heaviest and densest planet among the rocky ones in our solar system. It takes about a year, 365.25 days, for Earth to go around the Sun, and it spins around its own axis in about 24 hours. This spinning and the tilt of its axis give us seasons. The Moon, our natural satellite, orbits around Earth and helps stabilize its axis. It also causes tides, and because of that, we always see the same side of the Moon. Earth formed about 4.5 billion years ago from gas in the early solar system. Life started in the oceans about a billion years later and has been changing the Earth ever since. Humans appeared about 300,000 years ago and have spread all over the world, except Antarctica. We rely on Earth for our survival, but our activities are causing problems for the planet's climate and living things. It's important for us to find sustainable ways to live on Earth to protect ourselves and other forms of life. Scientists have found really old stuff in our solar system. Around 4.5 billion years ago, the Earth was already formed. Everything in the solar system, including Earth, came to be as the Sun formed and changed. The idea is that a spinning cloud in space collapsed due to gravity, forming a flat disk, and then planets formed from that disk along with the Sun. This cloud, called a nebula, had gas, ice, and dust. According to this idea, small bodies called planetesimals formed over 70 to 100 million years to create the early Earth. The Moon's age is estimated to be around 4.5 billion years, but some think it might be younger. One theory is that the Moon formed when a big object, about the size of Mars named Thea, hit Earth. It wasn't a direct hit, more like a side bump, and some of Thea's stuff joined with Earth. Between 4.1 and 3.8 billion years ago, the Moon went through a period of lots of asteroid impacts, which also affected the Earth. Earth's air and oceans were created by hot, bubbling volcanic activity and the release of gases. Water vapor from these sources turned into the oceans, and additional water and ice came from space objects like asteroids and comets. There might have been enough water on Earth from the very beginning. In this idea, gases in the air acted like a blanket, keeping the oceans from turning into ice when the sun was still young and not as bright. Around 3.5 billion years ago, Earth developed a protective magnetic field that helped keep the air from being blown away by the sun's wind. As the hot outer part of Earth cooled down, it formed the first hard outer layer, which was likely made of certain types of rocks. The first land, called continental crust, was created by melting parts of this hard rock layer. Some signs suggest that this continental crust existed as early as 4.4 billion years ago. There are two main ideas about how this initial small amount of continental crust turned into the larger amount we have today, one says it grew steadily over time, and the other suggests there was a quick increase in its volume during ancient times. These ideas can be reconciled by thinking that the continental crust went through large-scale changes, especially early in Earth's history. 
new continental crust is made through plate tectonics, a process powered by heat escaping from inside Earth. Over hundreds of millions of years, tectonic forces brought parts of the continents together to create supercontinents, like Rodinia, which started breaking apart around 750 million years ago. Later, continents joined to form Pannotia, 600 to 540 million years ago, and eventually Pangaea, which also broke apart around 180 million years ago. The most recent ice ages started about 40 million years ago and became more intense during the Pleistocene about 3 million years ago. Cold and thaw cycles have happened repeatedly in high and middle latitude areas every 21,000, 41,000, and 100,000 years. The last major ice age covered large parts of the continents, including areas not far from the equator, and ended around 11,700 years ago. About 4 billion years ago, certain chemical reactions happened, leading to the creation of molecules that could replicate themselves. After another 500 million years, the last common ancestor of all life we know today appeared. As life evolved, some organisms developed a way to directly use the sun's energy through a process called photosynthesis. This created oxygen, and as a result, an ozone layer formed in the upper atmosphere, protecting life from harmful solar radiation. Over time, smaller cells merged with larger ones, creating more complex cells called eukaryotes. Eventually, multicellular organisms formed, with cells working together in colonies. The ozone layer helps life spread across Earth's surface. Some of the earliest evidence of life comes from fossils in rocks. Around 1000 to 539 million years ago, a period called the Neoproterozoic, much of Earth might have been covered in ice, a scenario called Snowball Earth. This icy period happened before the Cambrian explosion, a time when life became more complex. After the Cambrian explosion, about 535 million years ago, there were several major mass extinctions and many smaller ones. The most recent major extinction, 66 million years ago, was caused by an asteroid impact and led to the extinction of dinosaurs. However, smaller animals like mammals, insects, lizards, and birds survived. Mammals, including an African ape species, evolved over the past 66 million years. Millions of years ago, one of these apes gained the ability to stand upright, which encouraged tool use and communication. This eventually led to the evolution of humans. As humans developed agriculture and civilizations, they began to influence Earth and the life forms around them, a trend that continues today. In the distant future, Earth's destiny is connected to the Sun's changes. In the next 1.1 billion years, the Sun will get brighter by 10%, and in the next 3.5 billion years, it will become 40% brighter. As the Sun gets brighter, Earth will heat up, and in about 100 to 900 million years, the lack of vegetation could make the air have too little carbon dioxide for plants to survive. Without plants, there won't be enough oxygen for animals, making animal life impossible. With increasing brightness, Earth's temperature might become extremely high, and all the water in the oceans could evaporate and be lost to space within 1.6 to 3 billion years. In about 5 billion years, the sun will change into a red giant. It's expected to expand to about 250 times its current size. Earth's fate is uncertain. As the red giant's sun loses some of its mass, Earth might move to a farther orbit, or, with gravitational effects, it could get too close to the sun and be vaporized. Earth is like a round ball, and its size makes it the fifth largest object in our solar system. It's a bit wider at the equator due to its spin, making it look more like a slightly squashed ball, or an ellipsoid. The biggest bumps and dips on Earth's surface, like the Mariana Trench and Mount Everest, don't change its overall shape much. Even the tallest mountain and the deepest trench only make a tiny difference in Earth's size. Because of the spin, the farthest point from the center of Earth is not the top of Mount Everest but the summit of Chimborazo in Ecuador. The ocean's surface is also not perfectly flat, it has bumps and dips caused by things like tides and winds. Scientists use a special shape called a geoid to understand Earth's surface. 
This shape is created by imagining a smooth ocean covering the entire Earth without any disturbances like tides or winds. The result is a shape that represents the average sea level, and it helps scientists measure the ups and downs of Earth's surface. Earth's surface is like a boundary between the air around us and the solid ground and oceans. If we imagine Earth as a big ball, it's like a squashed sphere with a surface area of about 510 million square kilometers. We can split Earth into two parts, the northern and southern hemispheres if we think about it by latitude, or the eastern and western hemispheres if we think about it by longitude lines that go from the North Pole to the South Pole. Most of Earth's surface is covered by ocean water, about 70.8%, making it a water world. The oceans are often divided into the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, or Antarctic, and Arctic Oceans. The ocean covers not just the floor but also parts of the land, like shelf seas and continental shelves. It has features like plains, mountains, volcanoes under the sea, deep trenches, and a long ridge system. In the polar regions, the ocean surface gets covered by ice in the colder seasons, connecting with the land and forming polar ice caps. The land makes up 29.2% of Earth's surface, including islands and four big continents, Africa Eurasia, America, Antarctica, and Australia. These continents are further divided into different regions. The land has a variety of landscapes like mountains, deserts, plains, and plateaus. The height of the land varies from below sea level at the Dead Sea to the top of Mount Everest, the tallest mountain. Land can have things like water, snow, ice, or plants covering it. Most of the land has vegetation, but some areas have ice sheets or hot and cold deserts. The top layer of land is called the pedosphere, made up of soil. Soil is essential for growing crops. About 10.7% of the land is suitable for farming, and only 1.3% is permanent cropland. The land surface and the ocean floor make up the Earth's crust, which, together with parts of the upper mantle, forms the lithosphere. The crust can be oceanic or continental, with the oceanic crust mainly being basaltic, and the continental crust including things like granite, sediments, and metamorphic rocks. A significant part of the continental surfaces is covered by sedimentary rocks. The topography, or shape, of Earth's surface includes both the land and ocean floor. The underwater part has an average depth of 4 kilometers. Earth's surface is always changing due to things like earthquakes, volcanoes, weathering, erosion caused by ice, water, wind, temperature, and also by living things like plants and animals. Imagine the Earth's outer layer as a big puzzle made up of pieces called tectonic plates. These plates are like large, stiff parts of the Earth's surface. They can do three main things, come together at convergent boundaries, move apart at divergent boundaries, or slide past each other at transform boundaries. When these plates interact, things like earthquakes, volcanoes, mountains, and oceanic trenches can happen. These plates sit on a layer called the asthenosphere, which is part of the upper mantle. The asthenosphere is solid but not as stiff as the plates, so it can flow and move along with them. When the plates move, they can cause oceanic crust to be pushed under other plates at convergent boundaries. At divergent boundaries, new crust forms as material from the mantle comes up. This process recycles the oceanic crust back into the mantle. That's why most of the ocean floor is less than 100 million years old. The oldest part is in the Western Pacific, estimated to be around 200 million years old. In comparison, the oldest continental crust is about 4,030 million years old. There are seven major plates, like the Pacific, North American, Eurasian, African, Antarctic, Indo-Australian, and South American plates. There are also other notable plates like the Arabian Plate, Caribbean Plate, Nazca Plate, and Scotia Plate. Some plates, like the Australian and Indian Plates, fused together between 50 and 55 million years ago. The oceanic plates move faster than the continental ones, with the Cocos Plate moving at about 75 mm per year and the Pacific Plate at 52 to 69 mm per year. On the other hand, the South American plate moves the slowest, 
at around 10.6 mm per year. Inside Earth, just like in other rocky planets, there are different layers based on what they're made of or how they act. The outer layer is a hard crust made of silicate rocks. Below the crust, there's a thick and gooey solid layer called the mantle. Deeper in the mantle, there are important changes happening at depths of 410 and 660 kilometers below the surface. These changes separate the upper and lower parts of the mantle. Even deeper, there's a liquid outer core that's not very thick, and below that is a solid inner core. The inner core might be spinning a bit faster than the rest of the Earth, turning a little every year. The inner core is much smaller than the Earth itself. As you go deeper into Earth, the materials get denser, which means they have more stuff packed into the same space. Earth is the densest among all the big objects in our solar system. Earth is quite heavy, weighing about 5.97 trillion billion kilograms. Most of Earth is made up of different elements, with the major ones being iron, oxygen, silicon, magnesium, sulfur, nickel, calcium, and aluminum. These elements together make up 98.8% of Earth. The core, which is at the center of Earth, has a lot of iron, making up 88.8% of its composition. The crust, the outer layer we live on, is mostly made of oxides, with over 99% of it being various combinations of oxygen and other elements like silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium, or sodium. Inside Earth, there are elements like potassium, 40, uranium, 238, and thorium, 232 that produce heat. In the center of Earth, it can get extremely hot, reaching temperatures up to 6,000 degrees Celsius, with very high pressure. This heat comes from the natural breaking down of these elements. Scientists believe that in the past, when Earth was younger and these elements were more active, it produced even more heat. Earth loses this heat in different ways. On average, the heat loss is about 87 milliwatts per square meter, making a total global heat loss of about 4.42 trillion watts. Some of the heat travels from the core to the crust through mantle plumes, which are like hot rock movements. These plumes can create things like hotspots and flood basalts. Another way heat is lost is through plate tectonics, where parts of the Earth's surface move around. The last way is through conduction, mostly under the oceans, where the crust is thinner than on the continents. All these processes together help keep Earth's temperature and balance the heat inside and outside. Gravity is the force that pulls things toward the center of Earth. When you're close to the surface of Earth, you feel a pull of about 9.8 meters per second squared. This is the gravity we're used to. However, different places on Earth can have slightly stronger or weaker gravity because of things like hills, rocks, or the structure deep within the Earth. These variations in gravity in different areas are called gravity anomalies. Earth has a magnetic field that's mainly created in its core through a process called dynamo. This process converts the energy from the heat and movement in the core into magnetic field energy. The magnetic field extends from the core to the surface and acts like a giant bar magnet, with its poles near Earth's geographic poles. The movements in the core are a bit chaotic, causing the magnetic poles to drift and sometimes switch places. This leads to changes in the magnetic field over time, with reversals happening irregularly, approximately every few million years. The last reversal occurred around 700,000 years ago. The magnetic field creates a protective zone around Earth called the magnetosphere. This shield deflects ions and electrons from the solar wind, the stream of charged particles from the sun. The solar wind pushes the day side of the magnetosphere closer to Earth and stretches the night side into a long tail. Within the magnetosphere, there are different regions. The plasmasphere is made up of low-energy particles following magnetic field lines. The ring current consists of medium-energy particles drifting along the geomagnetic field. The Van Allen radiation belts contain high-energy particles moving in random paths within the magnetosphere. During magnetic storms, charged particles can be sent into Earth's ionosphere, where they interact with the atmosphere and create the aurora, the beautiful light displays in the sky. 
Earth takes about 86,400 seconds for a full rotation relative to the Sun, which we call a solar day. However, this solar day is a bit longer now than it was in the 19th century due to a process called tidal deceleration. This means that each day can vary between being exactly 86,400 seconds and being up to 2 milliseconds longer than that. When we look at Earth's rotation relative to the fixed stars, called a stellar day, it's a bit shorter than the solar day, lasting about 86,164 seconds. Also, if we consider Earth's rotation relative to the moving March equinox, it's about the same duration as the stellar day, with a slight difference of about 8.4 milliseconds. In simpler terms, Earth's rotation affects how we see things in the sky. Celestial bodies, like stars and planets, appear to move from east to west at a rate of 15 degrees per hour. This motion is equivalent to the apparent size of the Sun or the Moon changing every two minutes when looking at the celestial equator from the surface of Earth. Earth goes around the Sun, and it's the third planet from the Sun in our solar system. The average distance Earth is from the Sun is about 150 million kilometers, and this distance is used as a standard unit called the astronomical unit. It takes Earth about 365.25 days to complete one orbit around the Sun, which we call a year. As Earth moves in its orbit, the Sun appears to move across our sky, and it takes about 24 hours for Earth to make a full spin around its axis. This spinning is why we have day and night. Earth is moving in space at an average speed of about 30 km per second. This speed is fast enough to travel around the Earth's diameter in just 7 minutes and reach the Moon in about 3.5 hours. The Moon and Earth also move together around a common point, and this takes about 27.32 days. When you combine this motion with Earth's orbit around the Sun, it results in a synodic month of about 29.53 days, which is the time it takes for the Moon to go from one new Moon to the next. Earth's axis is tilted, and this tilt, along with the orbit's shape, is why we have seasons and why there isn't an eclipse every two weeks. The hill sphere is like an imaginary bubble around Earth, and objects must stay within this bubble, or they can be influenced by the gravity of the Sun. In the grand scheme, Earth is part of the Milky Way galaxy and is about 28,000 light-years away from its center. It sits about 20 light-years above the flat part of the Milky Way, called the galactic plane, in a region called the Orion Arm. Earth's axis, an imaginary line around which it spins, is tilted at about 23.4 degrees. This tilt is why we have different seasons. When the North Pole is tilted toward the Sun, it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere, and when the South Pole is tilted toward the Sun, it's summer in the Southern Hemisphere. During summer, days are longer, and the Sun appears higher in the sky. In winter, it's cooler, and days are shorter. In extreme northern and southern regions, there are times when there's no daylight for several months, and other times when the sun is visible all day. Earth's closest approach to the sun occurs around January 3rd, and the farthest point around July 4th. These dates change over time due to factors like precession, forming cyclical patterns called Milankovitch cycles. The Southern Hemisphere gets slightly more solar energy over the year because it's tilted toward the Sun when Earth is closer to it, but this effect is less significant than the overall energy change due to the axial tilt. The Moon is a large natural satellite, about one-fourth the size of Earth. It's the biggest Moon compared to its planet in our solar system, even though Pluto's Moon Charon is larger compared to Pluto. Moons around other planets are also called Moons after our Moon. Scientists believe the Moon formed from a collision between Earth and a Mars-sized object called Thea, according to the Giant Impact Hypothesis. This explains why the Moon has less iron and volatile elements and has a composition similar to Earth's crust. The gravitational pull between Earth and the Moon causes tides on Earth. The Moon's rotation period matches its orbit around Earth, so it always shows the same face to us. As it moves, different parts of its face get sunlight, leading to different lunar phases. Because of this gravitational interaction, the Moon is gradually moving away from Earth, changing our planet over a long time. 
The moon likely played a crucial role in shaping Earth's climate and stabilizing its axial tilt, which affects seasons. Without the moon's influence, Earth's axial tilt might have changed chaotically over millions of years. From our perspective, the moon and the sun appear almost the same size, allowing for total and annular solar eclipses on Earth. In 2023, scientists suggested that remnants of a protoplanet called Thea could be inside Earth, left from a collision in ancient times, forming our moon. Around Earth, there are special groups of asteroids that share our orbit. As of September 2021, humans have launched and operated 4,550 satellites orbiting Earth. Some satellites are no longer working, there's also a lot of space debris, with over 16,000 tracked pieces. The biggest human-made satellite around Earth is the International Space Station. Earth's hydrosphere is all about water on our planet and where it's found. Most of it is in the global ocean, covering a massive area. The hydrosphere also includes water in the atmosphere, like clouds, and on land, such as seas, lakes, rivers, and underground water down to about 2,000 meters. Here's an interesting fact, if the Earth's surface were all at the same height, the world ocean would be around 2.7 to 2.8 kilometers deep. Most of this water, about 97.5%, is salty, leaving only 2.5% as fresh water. And guess what? Almost 69% of fresh water is locked up in ice caps and glaciers. The remaining 30% includes groundwater, surface water, covering only 2.8% of Earth's land, and other small fresh water forms like permafrost and water vapor in the atmosphere. In super cold places, snow hangs around and turns into ice over the summer, forming glaciers. These icy giants, influenced by gravity, shape the land by eroding surfaces and creating features like U-shaped valleys. In polar regions, huge ice sheets form over the land. Once upon a time, the Arctic sea ice covered an area as big as the United States, but it's shrinking due to climate change. Now, let's talk about the salt in the oceans. On average, there's about 35 grams of salt per kilogram of seawater. This salt mainly comes from volcanic activity or cool igneous rocks. The oceans also hold dissolved atmospheric gases that are vital for many aquatic life forms. Sea water plays a big role in our climate, acting as a massive heat reservoir. Changes in ocean temperature distribution can lead to significant weather shifts. Water, especially in liquid form, is a special feature of Earth. Unlike other planets in our solar system, Earth has stable surface conditions for water. While some moons show signs of having large amounts of liquid water, it's mostly under a frozen surface layer several kilometers thick. The air pressure at Earth's sea level is about 101.3 kilopascals, and it's kind of like the weight of the air around us. Imagine it's like a blanket covering the Earth, and this pressure helps create our atmosphere. The atmosphere is mostly made up of nitrogen, about 78%, oxygen, about 21%, argon, and a bit of other gases like carbon dioxide. Water vapor, which is like tiny water droplets in the air, can vary but is usually around 1%. Clouds, which are collections of these droplets, cover a big part of the sky, especially over oceans. The atmosphere has different layers, and the lowest one, called the troposphere, changes height depending on where you are on Earth. Life on our planet has actually changed the air over a really long time. A few billion years ago, plants started a process called oxygenic photosynthesis, which made the air we breathe today. It created the atmosphere with nitrogen and oxygen. This also led to the formation of the ozone layer, a layer high up that protects us from the sun's harmful rays. Our atmosphere does some really cool things. It moves water vapor around, gives us the air we need, burns up small space rocks before they hit Earth, and helps keep the temperature just right. This last part is like a natural blanket too. Greenhouse gases, like water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone, trap some of the heat from the Earth's surface. Without this, our average temperature would be way colder, and life on Earth might not exist as we know it. 
So, the atmosphere plays a crucial role in making our planet a comfortable place for living things. Earth's atmosphere doesn't have a clear edge, it gradually becomes thinner as we go higher and eventually blends into outer space. The majority of the air we have is in the first 11 kilometers, about 6.8 miles, above the surface, and this part is called the troposphere. The sun warms this layer, making the air expand and rise. When it rises, cooler air takes its place, creating a circulation that shapes our weather and climate. The main bands of air circulation are the trade winds near the equator and the westerlies in the middle latitudes. Oceans and their currents also play a big role in deciding our climate. The sun sends a lot of energy to Earth, but the farther you go from the equator, the less sunlight reaches the surface. This is because the sunlight has to travel through more of the atmosphere at higher latitudes. As you move away from the equator, the yearly average temperature at ground level drops by about 0.4 degrees Celsius as per degree of latitude. Different climate zones, like tropical, subtropical, temperate, and polar, are based on latitude. Other things like the distance to oceans, wind patterns, and the shape of the land also affect local climates. Places close to oceans have milder temperatures because oceans can hold a lot of heat. Wind carries the ocean's temperature to the nearby land. Water from the surface, like oceans and lakes, evaporates into the air. When warm, moist air goes up, it cools down, and the water in it turns into precipitation like rain or snow. This water falls back to the surface, and rivers carry it to lower places like oceans. This whole process, called the water cycle, is crucial for life on land and changes the Earth's features over very long periods. Precipitation can vary a lot, from several meters in wet areas to less than a millimeter in dry ones. Some places, like hot deserts or Antarctica, can experience extreme temperatures, reaching as high as 55 degrees Celsius in Death Valley or as low as minus 89 degrees Celsius in Antarctica. The outermost molecules in the atmosphere, energized by heat, can reach speeds that let them escape Earth's gravity, leading to a gradual loss of atmosphere into space. Hydrogen, being lightweight, escapes more easily than other gases, contributing to the changing state of Earth's atmosphere. While photosynthesis produced oxygen, the loss of hydrogen was essential for oxygen to accumulate. This loss may have influenced the type of life that evolved on Earth. In today's oxygen-rich atmosphere, most hydrogen turns into water before it can escape. The primary source of hydrogen loss now comes from the breakdown of methane in the upper atmosphere. Earth is the only known place where life has existed. Life on Earth started in its early bodies of water, a few hundred million years after Earth formed. Over time, life on Earth has shaped various ecosystems, forming a global biosphere. Life has significantly influenced Earth's atmosphere and surface, leading to events like the Great Oxidation Event. As life evolved, it diversified, creating different biomes, distinct habitats with similar plants and animals. These biomes developed at different elevations, temperatures, latitudes, and humidity levels. Earth species diversity is highest in shallow waters and forests, especially in warm and humid conditions. Cold polar regions, high altitudes, and extremely arid areas have fewer plants and animals. Earth provides liquid water, allowing complex organic molecules to form and interact. It also offers enough energy to sustain life's processes. Plants and organisms get nutrients from water, soil, and the atmosphere, and these nutrients are recycled among different species. Earth experiences extreme weather like tropical cyclones, earthquakes, landslides, and more, impacting life. Human activities, such as pollution, deforestation, and climate change, contribute to disasters and affect the environment. This includes the release of greenhouse gases, causing global warming, melting glaciers, rising sea levels, increased droughts, wildfires, and shifts in species distribution. Humans originated from earlier primates in eastern Africa around 300,000 years ago. Over time, they migrated and, with the introduction of agriculture around the 10th millennium BC, started settling on Earth's land. 
Antarctica remained the last continent to see human presence, and it has been limited until today. The human population has grown significantly since the 19th century, reaching 7 billion in the early 2010s. It's projected to peak at around 10 billion in the second half of the 21st century, with much of the growth expected in sub-Saharan Africa. The distribution of the human population varies worldwide, with a majority living in South to Eastern Asia, and 90% residing in the Northern Hemisphere. Urbanization has increased since the 19th century, and by the 21st century, most people live in urban areas. While humans have temporarily lived in specific underground, underwater, and space locations, the vast majority still depends on Earth's surface and its environment. A small number of people have ventured beyond Earth since the second half of the 20th century, with a fraction reaching the Moon. Earth has resources that humans use. Some, like fossil fuels, coal, petroleum, and natural gas, are non-renewable and take a very long time to replenish. Humans extract these resources from the Earth's crust for energy and chemicals, but this process can harm the environment. The Earth's biosphere produces essential things for humans, such as food, wood, medicines, oxygen, and the recycling of waste. Land-based ecosystems rely on topsoil and fresh water, while the oceanic ecosystem needs nutrients from the land. In 2019, large areas of Earth's surface were covered by forests, grasslands, used for animal feed, and cultivated for crops. A small percentage of land is irrigated for farming. Humans also use materials from the Earth to build shelters. Human activities have changed the Earth. By burning fossil fuels, like coal and oil, people have released more greenhouse gases into the air. This traps heat and makes the Earth warmer. In 2020, the global temperature was 1.2 degrees Celsius higher than before industrial times. This warming leads to problems like melting glaciers, higher sea levels, more droughts and wildfires, and animals moving to colder places. Scientists use the idea of planetary boundaries to measure how much humans impact the Earth. Out of the nine boundaries they identified, five have been crossed, meaning we're causing harm. These include damaging the environment, changing the climate, polluting with chemicals, destroying natural habitats, and affecting the nitrogen cycle. No country, as of 2018, is meeting people's basic needs without causing harm to these boundaries. But, there's hope that by using resources wisely, we can still meet everyone's needs without harming the Earth too much. So this was all about the birth of Earth, life on Earth and its fundamentals. Life on Earth is exceptional but scientists think that there is life on Saturn's largest moon Titan, check out this video to know how life is possible on Titan. See you there.